So let's talk about section 349. 349 is titled Limited Recreational Operations. Congress established a set of rules that um, they want to see codified in the federal regulation. Section 349 was created in January of 2019, and the FAA has one year from that date to codify everything in the Federal Aviation Regulation. Now, the first batch of changes just happened in May of 2019, which is why I'm recording these videos to update the old ones. This Section 349 is replacing Section 336, which had led the creation of Part 101. Now, both Section 336 and Part 101 no longer valid as of May of 2019. So everything I'm talking about now is related to Section 349. If you see anything about Section 336, this no longer exists and is no longer applicable. And there are some major changes. So in short, a hobbyist is the same thing as Section 349, which is the new regulation. And Section 336 was the old one. And in Part 101 was also the old regulation, which is kind of confusing. Just think about Section 349 now. This is where you get your information. This is where you need to, uh, this is what you need to follow when you fly. So under Section 349, the FAA highlighted eight different limitations that you need to follow. And now the FAA has until January of 2020 to basically implement all eight of these limitations. Some of them were already in the books. Some of them are upcoming. Some of them just recently changed in May of 2019. So let's go ahead and take a look at the list and then when they were implemented or when they will be implemented if uh, that is the case. There's two of them that still have to be implemented that the FAA hasn't done. Number one, this has been from the get-go, from day one, from section 336, the aircraft has to be flown strictly for recreational purposes. What this really means is if you're doing anything else than flying for fun, then this does not uh, apply. You have to follow regulation under part 107. We'll talk about that in a minute. What section 349 also says is number two, as the second bullet point that needs to be implemented, is that the aircraft is operated in accordance with a community-based organization set of safety guidelines. What this really means is that out there, they are organization, they are called CBOs, and CBOs have been around for a very long time. People flying uh, remote piloted aircraft for a very long time. And when they usually do it, they do it at a specific airfield and they have a specific set of rules. Now, what the FAA said is that they will be working with CBOs to come up with a set of rules that need to be applied for these locations. So that's step number two. It's not really in effect just yet because the FAA still has to coordinate with the CBOs in order to come up with this set of rules. So step number two is kind of mute at this point. Number three, the aircraft is flown within line of sight of the person operating the aircraft, okay? This kind of has been a rule all along. And also what it says in here is that a visual observer must be co-located or in direct communication with the operator if you're using a visual observer. The last thing also that it says in here, which is kind of a new thing, is that if you're doing FPV, first person view, you need to have a visual observer with you as you fly. Okay, this is kind of a new regulation. So if you're flying using goggles, which is FPV, then you need somebody else around you to help you with uh, figuring out if there's other traffic, if, um, if you're gonna be hitting something. So just make sure you follow that, that rule. Step number four, and this one also has been around since the beginning, which is the aircraft does not interfere with and gives way to any manned aircraft. This is important. Stay away from manned aircraft. This is not something that we want to be messing with. This is uh, just can be extremely dangerous. So for the safety of everyone, just make sure you stay away from manned operation. In step number five, this is actually a new one. The operator must obtain prior authorization from the FAA before operating in controlled airspace. This is kind of a biggie. This, in the past, you had to call within five miles of a control tower. You don't have to do this anymore. As a matter of fact, you can't do this anymore. The FAA will not allow you to talk to uh, the air traffic controller on the phone anymore. So under this, it basically says that you have to get authorization from the FAA in order to operate in controlled airspace. Now, you don't know what controlled airspace is just yet. I'm gonna talk about this in the next chapter when we talk about airspace. It's a lot more uh, complex than just going through a few slides. So bear with me for a minute. Just remember that you have to get authorization. Now. Interestingly, the FAA has said that there's two different methods right now that you can use to get authorization. The first one is to fly at an approved, what they call a fixed site or a flying field. So if you have a flying field where people fly their remote pilot aircraft, you can go there and you're allowed to fly there 
and I'll show you how to find a list of these fields on the map so you know where you can go. The other option in order to get approved to fly in controlled airspace is to submit a request via the LANCE program. The LANCE is the Low Altitude Authorization and Notification Capability Program. This was something that was put in place by the FAA to help remote pilots, so uh, operators under Part 107, to get approval to fly in controlled airspace. Now, for the longest time, they did not allow hobbyists to get into the uh, the lens program now this is going to change now you have to submit requests through the lens program if you want to get approved to fly in controlled airspace and i'll show you how to do this in videos now something that i need to mention here is that at the moment as of may of 2019 and there's no deadline for this the fa has not made lens available to hobbyists and they said that it will happen in the summer of 2019 Quite frankly, I'm not holding my breath, but we'll see. Uh, I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. At that point, you will be able to submit them. In the meantime, in the meantime, this is again kind of a big deal, you are not allowed to fly in controlled airspace unless you fly from an approved fixed site, which is the only option at the moment that you can get in order to fly there. No more calling the airports and no ability to put anything into the lens program at the moment. When this changes, I will update this video and I will let you know um, when the FAA make, makes this available and how you're going to submit these requests. I'll say that again, it's very important. At this stage, you can no longer call the air traffic control facilities in order to get airspace authorization. The, uh, the ATC facilities have been, um, have been told to not give authorization on the phone, so just, just don't do it. They have so much going on, they don't need to be on the phone giving approval to uh, people that want to fly their drones. Now, if you want to learn more, bear with me, finish these slides, finish these videos, and then go to the airspace section, and I'll show you how to identify what controlled airspace is, and I'll also show you how to find approved fixed sites. Another thing that's new, and that's step number six in here, is that it says that in controlled airspace, which is class G, again, I'll show you how to do this in a minute, the aircraft is flown no higher than 400 feet above the ground. This is kind of a new thing. In the past, the FAA really had not said anything about 400, uh, 400 feet. They recommended it in, a, in an advisory circular, but they did not really make it ruling. So now this is part of it. You cannot fly about 400 feet above the ground. Step number seven, this is not in place just yet, but this is in the uh, section 349 to be implemented by January of 2020. The operator must pass an aeronautical uh, test and a safety test and maintain proof of test passage. And that needs to be made available to the FAA or to law enforcement um, upon request. This is kind of a big deal as well. So far, you could just go to Best Buy, buy your drone, or go to Walmart, buy your drone, and then just go and fly it. This will be no longer the case. Uh, by the time the FAA puts this into the regulation, you will have to pass a test. Now, when that happens, guess what? This course will likely give you already all the knowledge that you need to pass the test, and anything added to the test, I will be adding it to this course. So this will be, um, you're already ahead of the game. You probably know more than most people as it is by the time you're done with this course. So I will make this course good enough so that you can pass the test and give you more additional information as well so you can be a safe pilot. Step number eight has been around for a while as well under section 336. The aircraft is reg registered and marked and proof of registration is made available to the FAA or to law enforcement. Again, you need to have your drone registered. It's cheap, it's only $5 and you just put your number on the drone and that's all you have to do, just like your license plate on your car. All right, this is it. Thank you for watching. If you need more information, if you're a hobbyist and you need to, uh, and you want to find more information about the rules and the airspace and then a bunch of tips for flying as a hobbyist, I have a course available, Drone Flying 101, and it's available in the description. Now, if you are thinking of getting your Part 107 certificate, I also have a course available. This course is a little bit longer. It's 12 hours of content. There's over 250 questions available in that course for you to practice. And there's also two practice exam at the end. There's nothing else that you need and I guarantee you that you will pass. Most of the people get over 90% on their exam by following this course. So this is it. Please, if you like these videos, give, give it a thumbs up and also subscribe. I will be adding more content, especially during this break right now where I have more time to record. So I'm gonna be getting on this. I have a lot of topics that I wanna cover. The more people subscribe, the more motivated I am to do this. So please go ahead and do so. And then I'll see you for the next video.